Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube video. Now today I am just going to do a quick general update of the greenhouse because everything's growing at a very quick rate as you can probably see next to me. I've put the tallest ones over here and they're getting really tall already like the top of this side of the greenhouse is only here and I'll come back to this one in a minute because this one's currently my favourite. Um, so I'm just going to give like a general greenhouse tour so I will just talk about what I've been doing in the greenhouse as you can see flowers have opened and again really tall um, and then I'll flip over the camera and show you things on the other side to show you how big the growth has got in just a matter of weeks since I did my last video um, so I'll just start talking so it's not really um, sp uh, aimed at any specific plant I'm just going to give a rundown of everything that's been going on just to give you all an update so um, starting with the flowers um, this is my Linda Butt flower. So as you can see the size, especially on these five, I've got the main five which um, are my original three and two new ones. So Linda Butt is one of my newest Saracenias and has got flower. So I was going to originally think about doing a um, how to pollinate a Saracenia flower because I have been doing my own crosses at the moment but as this is my first year doing it, um, I have decided not not to do a video pollinating um, the Saracini flowers purely because just in case you know I've got anything wrong I kind of want to make sure that I can do it 100% before telling you guys how to do it and being completely wrong but I've kind of got the general gist of it really so um, obviously you've got the umbrella shape underneath the flower captures the pollen so inside if you lift up the leaves which is going to be quite hard to show another reason why I couldn't really do a video because of angles um, but if you lift up the leaves inside, which I don't know if you can see, you can see the anthers, so where the pollen obviously comes from, and then under the sides, so it's got these little pointy bits there with the little groove on, so just, yeah, which is really hard to see, but, um, which... Um, is the stigma so there's little divots on the inside of that little shape and that's where you put the pollen from so I will be crossing this Linda Butt flower and um, putting the pollen from this one over to this flower here which is my Lacophila pubescent form so it's quite fuzzy it's quite nice um, and again one of my first ones I've got so I've already been pollinating a couple so as you can see this flower flower which is green and bigger so Lacophila type hybrids because uh, Linda Butt is a Moriai hybrid so it's got Lacophila in it um, produce a nice red flower and the flower species produce the, a green larger flower so it's got quite a big size on that one but I then pollinate the flowers so I've crossed this one because it's an unknown flower even though it's got some really nice pictures on it um, with another unknown flower because I've never had them before so I don't actually know what they look like and because they're unknown um, it's going to be quite exciting to see what they get because one of them hasn't opened yet this one has so I kind of know half the parentage so far and then after um, uh, pollinating the flowers I put these bags on so they're like little gift kind of bags so you get them like you get beads or whatever in them um, so it's like a netting bag so it will stop obviously the flowers going mouldy and they're see-through so I've just got these they're big enough to fit over the flower so once these are done I will put the bags over the flowers to stop insects and anything else that comes into the greenhouse pollinating the flowers because obviously I've I'm doing the crosses myself I want them to be crossed how I want them to be so um, that's kind of the process of what I've done so obviously like I said I won't go into de massive detail but that's kind of the rundown so I kind of understand the structure I'm hoping I've done it right um, obviously only time will tell because it does take a good long process so first of all the petals will drop off the flowers and then they will eventually lift upwards and obviously the seeds will form but you won't see if it's worked or not or you won't see if the seeds obviously you've actually got seeds until about August time so I am gonna have to wait about three months I would say since pollinating to get them so it's a long game but obviously if it works then it'll be good uh, unfortunately I've only had six Saracenia this year flower so that's only obviously six possible hybrids I could make two of them are plants I don't even know the obviously species of them I got them in a plant sale and 
they were mature plants so I couldn't resist and I got them um, so if I look at obviously you can see the biggest ones this one is the Adrian Slax Maxima so um, sorry the Flava Adrian Slax Maxima and it reached the top of the, that side of the greenhouse because this side's lower and already it's about to touch the top so I'm going to have to move it forward even more um, this one currently measures 63 centimetres which you know it's not the most significant height but this species is obviously a, one of the largest Saracenia and I'm really happy to have it in my collection it can reach up to 120 centimetres um, I'd still say this one's quite a young plant because it's never flowered before I had it last year and it didn't flower then so it's still going to be quite young because it's it's never flowered before so but once it does that will make some really good hybrids really tall hybrids um, but I might put a picture over the top just to show you the true height of that because it's quite hard to see sitting here obviously it's kind of as tall as me sitting here I'm not the tallest person in the world but that's quite nice and so plus it's making a nice display next to me at the same time so um, it's kind of showing off really um, and I've got the Rubicorpra here which you can see it's starting to get it's red so this one again I'll put a picture over um, will be like a nice deep deeper red with a yellow inside so again these are my first three proper mature seratines I got was this Rubicorpra the Adrian Slack and then um, I've got the Lacophila here so the Lacophila pubescent form so they were my original trio which I have mentioned before like in one of my winter videos just to show um, what they would look like and as you can see they're starting to open now and uh, the ones with flowers the pictures are obviously at a slower rate plus Lacophila usually do or are a bit behind um, anyway so that's those five and obviously I've spent a bit of time talking about them but I really like them and they are my, currently my favourite so I will now flip the camera around and show you what other Saracenia fly traps, Drosera, what I've got and I hope you're enjoying it. Okay so if I start over here I have got four new Saracenia to um, add to my collection so I did a Wax Wicked Plant order which is a nursery in the UK um, specifically selling um, coniferous plants and I got these four so two of them um, well actually three of them were on my wish list and one of them I got purely because a friend of mine has got the this Saracenia Tygo here um, and I, he, I really like it and I was just like I, I'm gonna have to get one for myself as well so that again kind of just happened because I can't say no to plants um, but the lighting's not great but you can kind of see the Saracenia Tygo has a very copper coloured lid so I do also have a Saracena Capri, but that's yet to open and is it outside my bog garden? So I would imagine it had a similar copper colour to this Tygo, but I went for that because I really like the copper colours on the Saracenia, like a nice dark or rustic colour. Um, I also went for a Saracenia Aureophylla, um, sand mountain, so it's got deep veining on this one. I went for a Saracenia Flava um, for Atropurpurea and um, Blackwater, so this is one that's been on my wishlist for ages. So again you can't really see lighting's really bad in my greenhouse especially this time of year when the sun is you know, all over you got sun all day and it just makes it so shadowy but you can kind of see that um uh, obviously only the tygo is currently opening the a couple of them had bigger traps but they did break in the mail um and obviously you can see that one there uh, but they are coming back really quickly. When I first received them, they were probably half the size they are now. Um, and then at the back there, which is the smallest one, even though it's obviously going to be the biggest one, hopefully, one day is the Saracen Lacophila giant. So it's quite a nice white variety, which is really nice. So I can't wait for them ones to grow this year. I just obviously hope they grow really quickly. Um, obviously, purple ears. Uh, the Joanna, which was slanted to one side, I've cut off a few of the leaves, but some of them are still quite long. They look a lot longer than they on the video than they actually are me standing here. Um, but that's got two traps that are growing kind of at the same rate. I've got the Saracenia alata um, black tube, so that's starting to get a really nice dark colour. That opened, it's very small, but you can kind of see up the picture that it's quite dark, and then. Obviously, got some taller varieties here. 
Um, there's one at the back, again, it's another unknown Flava hybrid. Um, we've got this Pender County, so it's a Ceracene Flava Var Ornata Pender County, and it's got these really nice kind of lids with a little point on there, which you can see. It's got some really nice growth down here. So it, the rhizome over winter grew and it's got about three, four growing points on that. So in the winter I can divide that up. But I quite like that one as a nice clump. It's going to look really nice this year because the trap's quite tall. Um, and then this one at the back here is a Saracenia aureophila cross Wilkinson's White Knight. So that is one that I got from my Instagram follower Trap Kid when he gave me the um, plants for free. And this is one of them. It's open, so it's got the, the coffla shaped lid with the frills, but it's also got some really nice colour in the middle. So I really like this one. Um, obviously, it's got another trap coming up here. Really light colour as well. Um, this is obviously another one of the flowers that I've pollinated. At the front here, I've got my spatulata, which are all currently flowering. So that looks a really nice display from them at the moment. My fly traps are really coming out now, so I've got some more peppery here. Flanks is probably my favourite Venus flytrap cultivar, so as you can see the lashes on that are really really long, so like magnificent display as they've been opening more traps, uh, the la longer the lashes have been getting, so I'll be propagating that, um, obviously it's flowering. I've got a dentate at the back, my Darwin so some of them are still looking quite small but as you can see the new growth on them is upright compared to the old growth which obviously you can see down there I've got my little green sawtooth there which is slowly coming back it's probably the slowest one out of them all my filiformis has grown massive and then my cephalotus which is getting some nice leaves in there now which I can propagate because I've already propagated one which has actually been successful um, but it didn't have any more leaves so I haven't been able to do any more propagation with that but hopefully very soon I could do some more got my bunny bog over here so the fly straps on these are getting massive so as you can see the displays of these are going to be huge and to a point it's already looking kind of like a jungle in here but everything's going to grow back really well. Obviously, got some baby Saracenia in here, which this one is getting some really nice traps. Um, flower stalks are massive as well. Um, obviously, coming over here, all the um, Drosera, smaller Drosera pygmy sun juice, and I've got Spatulata in there. They are um, really coming out, so nice and big on the sundew cottage. Um, Pygmy sundews as well, kind of looking the same from when I last um, showed them. Scorpiodes, obviously, are a mess, <laughs> uh, which I like, that basically how they're meant to be. Um, there's so many, they're so dewy. Um, them, oh, I've got some more, these are for a friend, so that's the Anglica, which is mine. Um, so that's the fifth plant that I got from Wax. And then I'll just mention these three here, because I really do like these cultivars. So low-key jealous but um microgente is probably one of my favorites that um we did so we did a combined order is basically why i've got his um so we did a combined order so it saves you know on postage and delivery but obviously we won't be able to give them to each other until obviously at a later date but um so we've got the microgente here the dentate which obviously i've already got one myself and then this little one here is a red scamp so it's got some really nice little sort of type leaves on that one and then last thing i'll show you is my um largest droses so the banata is massive um especially this one as you can see extremely dewy they've been catching a lot of flies and everything that just kind of wanders into the greenhouse um obviously i've got my capensis at the back and you know everything has really come out in the greenhouse so everything's really dewy everything's growing all the traps and pictures are opening and i think that is all i'm going to show today obviously you can see these ones at the back it's obviously getting really wild um so yeah everything's going to look really nice so i'll continue updating you all and you know showing everything that goes on so as it progresses obviously we have to do more propagation videos but 
that's basically all I've got to show for today. So thank you for watching.